Um, so thanks so much for the invitation. Um, today I'll be talking about the conformal bootstrap for 3D fermionic theories. So let's get right to it. So the philosophy of the bootstrap in general is to impose crossing symmetry together with unitarity in order to get some constraints for the CFT data for some theories that you want to study. So today I'll be studying the crossing symmetry for the four point function of four identical fermions. More specifically, I'll be studying theories with a global ON symmetry, and I'll impose that the fermions that appear in the four-point function are actually in the vector representation of the global ON symmetry. So while all the results that I'll be showing apply to all the fermionic CFTs in three dimensions, um, I'll want to emphasize a specific example of one fermionic CFT, um, which is the gross navoyu kawa model, which will be very relevant for the results that I'll show. This is a theory that has an O-N global symmetry. It has N Majorana fermions, I there runs from one to N, uh, parity odd scalar sigma, um, that's coupled to the fermions through the Yukawa coupling, and there's also a quartic interaction for the scalar field. So, um, keeping this result in mind, keep, keeping this model in mind, what are the results? Um, so there it is. Uh, let's decipher this plot. Um, on the x-axis, we have the scaling dimension of the lowest fermion in the theory, while on the y-axis, we have the dimension of sigma, which uh, in the gross Novoyukawa theory was the parity odd scalar. This plot also assumes that the second parity odd scalar is irrelevant. Um, so the blue shows allowed regions, while the black shows disallowed regions. So wherever there is black, there cannot be a CFT with a global ON symmetry. So you see several kinks that are fairly curious. And in general, when we see kinks um, with a numerical bootstrap, um, it so happens that actual theories live there. So today, I'll explain why the gross novoyu kawa theories actually sit at those kinks. So the first sign that that's true is from large n. So we could compute the scaling dimensions, these two scaling dimensions at large n. So for instance, for n equals 10, we see that um, the results are extremely close to our kink. Unfortunately, since uh, for a small series, for, for small values of n, the series is not very convergent, um, we don't have any evidence that for small n, the kinks correspond uh, to the gross navoyu kawa models. However, there's another tool, which is the 4 minus epsilon expansion. So the top kink there, um, actually, you see, it's, is very close to the 4 minus epsilon expansion results for the gross navoyu kawa model for n equal 2. So that's pretty strong evidence that the top kink is actually the theory that we're looking for. So what about the bottom kink? That's a little bit curious. Um, we only have that for small values of n, but not for large values of n. So that's quite interesting, because if you study the theory in 4 minus epsilon, in the 4 minus epsilon expansion, one usually finds two zeros of the beta function, not only one. One has positive quartic coupling, and one has negative quartic coupling. So one usually discards the latter solution because one thinks that it's unstable, and therefore the theory would be non-unitary. However, in the case of the gross novoyu kawa model, for small values of n, if one computes the scaling dimensions in the epsilon expansion, one finds that um, for, this, for, for the second um, solution, for which the quartic coupling is negative, the dimensions actually appear to be unitary. And that's what's predicted by the purple diamond shape. Um, so you see that's very close to the kink over there. So that's most likely a new CFT that only exists for small values of n um, that is either unitary or very close to being unitary, so close that the numerical bootstrap cannot distinguish it. Finally, I'd like to discuss the special case of n equals 1, where one cannot impose a global ON symmetry specifically. So people believe that for n equals 1, there's actually emergent supersymmetry. 
Um, if that's the case, then there has to be a relationship between the dimension of the fermion and the dimension of the lowest lying parity odd scalar. Um, that relation is just given by the line that I show in the figure. So again, I show bounds assuming that sigma prime is irrelevant, and one sees that the kink over there that was the top kink from before is extremely close to the Suzy, Suzy line. However, it's not quite on it. Um, that implies that in order to get the kink to be precisely on the supersymmetric line, one needs to have sigma prime to be marginally relevant. So it has a dimension of about 2.95. That actually agrees with results from epsilon expansion. So um, just to summarize, uh, we've managed to get um, precise scaling dimensions, so we managed to get the precise spectrum for the gross nevoyu cow model. We found that at low values of n, there are signatures of a possible new CFT, and we found that in the case for, uh, n equal 1, there is strong evidence to suggest that indeed there is emergent supersymmetry. Um, thank you so much. Um, this work uh, is in collaboration with many people that I'd like to thank and you could find more results in these two papers. Thanks again. Any questions for Luca? Um, is there an uh, estimate of the error of the epsilon expansion uh, results? Um, well, given that the epsilon expansion is not an asymptotic series, I would say no, because if you include uh, an arbitra arbitrarily many loops in the epsilon expansion, eventually you'll get further and further away from the true result. So I personally don't know of a way to put errors on the epsilon expansion. The results that I showed are actually um, actually use PADE resummations uh, in order to improve the accuracy of the results, but I don't know a way of a way to put errors. But I empirically, if you just compare different uh, loop orders, would you be able to? Sorry? Uh, I didn't it's just empirically, it. if you compare the result up to some loop order. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, up to three loops. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? In your talk, you talked about the 4 minus epsilon expansion. That's you, true, yes. Did, did you mean the 2 plus epsilon expansion? Yeah, there is a 2 plus epsilon expansion as well. Um, but um, that only has been done for the top fixed point, not for the bottom fixed point. And the specific results that I showed here come only for from, from 4 minus epsilon expansion. Then they don't use 2 plus epsilon expansion. Uh, sorry, what's confusing me is in that in four dimensions, psi bar psi square is uh, uh, irrelevant. Yes. So I, uh, how, did you do a, how, how do you do a four minus epsilon expansion in that? Ah, okay. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Igor. Okay, so let us thank Luca again.